whoa, what? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah, this is a different location. I met Matter Hackers down here in Southern California doing a visit for a meetup just back from SolidWorks World, and I've always wanted to take a look and use the Piopoli Moai SLA 3D printer. Rather than having one at my overcrowded house, I thought I would get some prints done here at Matter Hackers and then tell you about the machine. So, well, I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. Now that we've gotten the part of how to prepare a model, <clears throat> this episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Matter Hackers. Ah, uh, there you are. The Piopoli Moai 3D printer is an SLA-based 3D printer, meaning it has pew 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 lasers and it can create models of incredible accuracy and detail. It's phenomenal. It's got a build area of 130 by 130 by 180 on the Z axis. And the laser point is 70 microns. We're used to 3D printers that might normally come with a 0.5 or a 0.4 nozzle. 0.4 is 400 microns. And when we're talking about a 70 micron point, that's 0 0.07 millimeters, meaning the laser, more so than FDM, can achieve this finer detail because it's just smaller. It's smaller than what an FDM 3D printer is going to be able to push out in plastic. The laser in it is 150 milliwatts and it is a 405 nanometer laser, meaning you will have to find yourself some very special glasses if you, if you want to tinker with it. And yes, it has an enclosure. Yes, it has a key and a lock system to keep people out while it's printing. Yes, it has safety mechanisms like this switch, which depowers the laser if it's running when the doors open. But safety first, wear your special glasses to guard your eyes against 405 nanometer laser fire. Finally, the, the, the height at which you can build your layers goes, well, 200 microns, 0.2 millimeter layers, but it goes all the way down to 10 microns or 0 0.01. That's awesome. So for those unfamiliar with how an SLA printer works, essentially your build plate, instead of Instead of sitting here and having stuff build up, the build plate exists at the top of the machine, lowers itself into the goo, and then lasers cure layers of goo as the build plate slowly rises from the goo. When printing with SLA machines such as the Moai, the tank that holds all the goo does have to move away a little bit between each layer and that tilting action or that moving action ensures that the part that's being built onto the build plate isn't actually stuck to the tank. That would be terrible. Resin prints from SLA printers are interesting in that uh, what's different than FDM is that you have to finish these prints. So once you're able to separate the model from the build plate, the model has to be added to an isopropyl alcohol bath. Uh, here at Matter Hackers, I know they use like a jewelry cleaning station that has uh, some isopropyl alcohol in it. You can also have a tub of isopropyl alcohol, put your model in there and just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Once that's done, the model has to be UV cured. And here in California, it's easy enough. You can set it out in the beautiful sunshine. But in Seattle, where I'm from, or if it's nighttime, <laughs> you do have to use a UV light. Uh, you can use a nail curing lamp, or I believe there is a light available with this machine. The UV light then hits the model and after a few hours, it's able to cure the resin and, and harden it, essentially. One thing to note, the Moai is open source and uh, it's not, it's not Lulzbot style open source. The, the build of materials isn't available, but it'll take any resin. Uh, the Piopoli resin is pre-configured in the uh, software that you use to print with, but uh, it'll take any resin, you just might have to configure it and play around a little bit in order to get the settings dialed in just right. The machine is awesome, and of course we need to show you the prints that it's able to achieve, but before we do that, we should probably look into how you actually prepare an STL file to be printed with the Moai printer. Normally in an FDM world, you, you bring it into a slicer and it creates the layers uh, that the machine knows how to lay down with plastic, it exports it as a G code and you put it on SD card or you print via some sort of octoprint method. This is slightly different, but it uses uh, the, the same idea behind slicing because it, it needs to know the layers, but the laser is what completes the layers rather than the plastic. For models that don't require support, such as Phil here, you can just put him into Matter Control or Cura and you can slice it and then take that G-code, put it on SD card, stick it in the Moai and print away. It's easy enough. 
But for models that require support, you do need to add Mesh Mixer to the mix. Piopoli has settings for Mesh Mixer, and Mesh Mixer creates a tree support structure for the model. So if this is Phil, and you need to print him like this, for example, then Mesh Mixer is going to create the supports that the SLA printer needs in order to ensure that he is able to print completely. The Moai build plate when represented in Cura actually has a red side and a green side, and that's because when the tank tilts in between each layer, the red side is what moves the most. And so use red and green in Cura as almost a, its confidence. If it's in the red zone, it's gonna move the most, and you know, that could result in a bad print. Whereas uh, further towards the green side, it's moving less, there's less suction power forces being applied, and your model, uh, you can be more confident and have more peace of mind that your model is going to be successful. That's not to say red is failure, green is perfect, it's just a way, it gives you a representation of the tank tilting and moving, and uh, it's, just, it's just so you know more. And knowing is half the battle. I do know that Matter Control has a new version coming soon. Uh, the 2.0 software, I believe, is available in Experimental. On uh, You can get it on GitHub. And uh, they are playing around with tree supports and more SLA-specific settings in Matter Control. So I highly suggest you check that out. And finally, when you're preparing your model, you're using something that is a liquid base. So in FDM 3D printers, you have infill, and it just has a percentage of the inside of the model solid plastic. But with SLA printers, you don't want it to be full of resin because you don't need it to be. And so in Mesh Mixer, you can hollow out your model and then add specific holes that let the resin drain out when the model is done printing. Uh, Angus over at Maker's Muse created a great video that talks about how to hollow your model and add the holes in Mesh Mixer for SLA printing. I'll put that link down in the description. Now that we've gotten the part of how to prepare a model for printing, in SLA printing, we should probably take a look at the models, and there's a couple I want to highlight. First is the Benchy! Look at that, it's a Benchy. Benchy's printed on an SLA machine are exquisite, and the Moai is no different. The Moai produces a fantastic Benchy. You can read the letters on the bottom, the bow is great, the smokestack is tall, the box in the back is boxy, and the place for the little toothpick flag is perfect. It's such a good model, I love it, the SLA Moai Printer does a fantastic job of representing the Benchy among the fleet that I probably already have from my FDM machines. If we're going to talk about the Benchy, we should talk about the Shipwreck Benchy. Look at that. Oh, poor Benchy. Split in half, the bottom of the ocean, and all the plant life, and the whatever else is down there at the bottom of the ocean is growing up. The Moai did a fantastic job of all of the tiny, tiny little detail from all of this stuff. And you could print this on an FDM machine, but you're going to spend an eternity either picking out support material or trying to size it for a nozzle to be able to spit out the plastic small enough to get all of this detail. You could, of course, try PVA supports with something like this on FDM, but you're never going to achieve the same detail and quality that the Moai was able to produce right here. It's Steamboat Benchy. That's not the real name. It's a steamboat. It's available on Thingiverse, but it, a lot of people call it Steamboat Benchy because the Benchy is so popular. The detail that the Moai is able to produce on this is fantastic. The little fence at the top and the little smokestacks are not just perfect, but perfect. It's glorious how well the detail comes out on all of these small parts and all of these small models. And when I printed this, I actually <laughs> scaled it down by 50%. Still looks good. It's an accurate representation of what the Moai is able to do. SLA printing isn't just for knickknacks and small little boats. It's also for production level items such as rings and jewelry. And this is an awesome ring and it's shown using the tree supports that SLA printers love. And it's great. The design is perfect. That's just it. The SLA printers, the Moai, it's just able to produce these fine, fine details. And this, this, is, this is a fantastic ring. And of course you can print with different colored resins on this machine to, to print it, you know, greens or blues or whatever. And uh, SLA prints are easy to paint as well, and sand, sanding for days. While SLA printing, especially from the Moai, is great for achieving wonderful detail in models like this cube here, the issue is bed support and supports in general. And so this cube doesn't have a lot of surface area for it to stick to the bed. So a little brim is used in order to keep it adhered to the bed 
uh, the brim did stick out and so it's been trimmed and chipped away, but you are left with a brim on the print that you would have to clean up. If you were going to print this and you wanted to angle it and just have support structures going up to support everything, then, well, then you have a bunch of support structures that you do have to chip away. So one of the things with SLA 3D printing is, yes, you can achieve great detail, but there are some considerations you have to take before, uh, before, before printing things. And finally, the Moai, using SLA technology, is able to produce fantastic miniatures. And for this example, I'd like to show you this Deathclaw. It's printed tiny, it's small enough to fit into my hand, but at the same time, the details on the model are exquisite. And printing something like this on an FDM machine at this size is, I would say, nearly impossible. And if you were going to size it up, most likely, unless you wanted to print supports all over the place, you would have to break it up into pieces, which you could then assemble, sand, prime, and paint later. But for now, with the Moai, we're able to create stuff that looks just like this without much effort. In the end, the Piopoli Moai is a wonderful 3D printer. It is SLA based, so you're dealing with resin and that can be messy. But sometimes, depending on what you want to print, that mess is totally worth it. Especially if you're doing jewelry, miniatures, or things that require uh, exquisite detail. That's what this is for, and that's what makes any sort of mess totally worth it. Plus, don't forget right now, because I'm filming this video, Matter Hackers has authorized me to say the fully assembled Moai is actually $16.95 right now. It's $300 less than the normal price. How long that's going for, I really don't know because uh, it'll go as long as supplies last, I guess. Uh, but anyway, information is down at the Moai link in the description. You can click it and find out if that $16.95 price is still available. If you want to put it together yourself though, and you don't want to ship a laser to your house, you can always buy the kit at $12.95 and that's available at the link in the description as well. Well, a big thanks for Matter Hackers for bringing me down and allowing me to film in their wonderful space. Again, the Moai is available from Matter Hackers. Links are in the description. I think I already told you that, but it doesn't hurt to reiterate something awesome. Hey, you know what? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not and ring that bell to be notified of when a pew 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 lasers is uploaded to the channel. And uh, if you like what we did and you want to buy me a coffee, there's a link down there. If you like what we do, consider supporting the channel via Patreon.com. There's a link down there for that as well. And finally, if you find yourself shopping online, there are affiliate links that help benefit the channel. Those are down there. And all of those ensure that I'm able to continue to put food on the table. Beyond that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.